For today's cup of coffee, we're going to discuss ways to fight back against cognitive dissonance and mind control. And I'm planning a later cup that will detail the techniques of mind control at a later date. It involves quite a bit of research, and I don't want to give you all a half-brewed cup. And since today is the Sabbath, I do try to have a message that's more positive and uplifting, which is very needed in today's world. I will go ahead and give the bare bones of mind control and ways to combat it, this. Now, this will come from a Christian perspective, but if you're not a believer, uh, there's still information that can be valuable to you. So, please continue to listen. Rather than break the flow of speech and bore you with numbers and verses, I'll put the scriptures in the description box. Now, there's a wonderful website that is called Bible Gateway where you can compare and contrast different translations to help you get a fuller understanding of Scripture. And if King James isn't your thing, it isn't mine either, then you can try New King James, Complete Jewish Bible, Contemporary English Version, and about 50 others. For real, I haven't counted to see exactly how many versions are available, but there is a lot. Uh, back to the discussion of mind control. It's recorded to have begun in Genesis, and uh, when whatever is being described as the serpent spoke to Eve and asked, did God really say? And Eve repeated what God had told her and Adam, which was that they could eat of any tree except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then the twisting of the mind or cognitive dissonance began. Now, cognitive dissonance is trying to hold two opposing or opposite thoughts in your mind simultaneously, such as war equals peace. God told Eve what to do and what not to do. Now, we can ask why the tree was even placed in the garden, but that's for another cup, and that would discuss the responsibility and gift of free will. Rather than believing in what God said, the serpent stated that Eve would not die, and he tempts her with the promise that she could be like God. Now, notice that Eve was alone when the serpent spoke to her, and that's one of the basic techniques of mind control, divide and conquer. Now, the enemy deals in half-truths and lies. Now, Eve ate of the fruit, and because she didn't drop dead physically in the moment, she believed what the serpent had told her, and then she went to Adam. Now, men, this is where you all need to be strong enough to withstand the temptation of women. You can be loving, compassionate, empathetic, but stand your ground when anyone, especially a woman, is trying to get you to do something that's wrong. Now, as a woman, I know how a lot of women are, and when you encounter a woman who has given herself over to the dark side, she can be more dangerous than a rattlesnake in your back pocket. Now, Adam gives in and the spiritual break between humans and God begins. For those of you who have kids, we understand how heartbreaking it can be for them to uh, be disobedient, especially when we know that what they've done will ultimately cause them pain. Now, humans are designed to interact with other humans, and it goes like, you know, families, communities, etc. And this is for support, protection, and getting things accomplished, such as farming, raising kids, helping with household tasks, and caring for others, etc. And that's for the betterment of the species. But when a person begins to care more about what people think of them rather than what God thinks about them, that's where your problems are going to begin also. We are to think for ourselves and not blindly follow the herd. Now, I'm going to go forward a few thousand years for time's sake. Now, the Hebrews are slaves to the Egyptians who tell them what to do, when to do it, what to eat, everything. There was no need for the Hebrews to think for themselves. Now, God brings them out from under government control and tries to teach them how to think and do for themselves. Now, at this point, this group of people, they were basically institutionalized, and so they wanted to go back to Egypt. Now, God gives them a written list of do's and don'ts, and they still screw it up. Why? Because somewhere the enemy is still back there whispering, it did God really say? Now, I, I don't know about you, but I don't think it's that hard to take a day off uh, from work once a week and, you know, to don't steal from your neighbor or sleep with their spouse uh, or isolate yourself from the rest of the people for a while if you're suspected of having something that might be contagious. Notice it didn't make everybody locked down. It was just the individual. Okay, I had to give a little background or none of this was going to make sense. And just remember, this is barely skimming the surface of all this. 
One of the best examples of fighting against mind control and cognitive dissonance is when the devil tempted Christ in the wilderness. Now, the devil challenges Christ to prove who he is by turning stones into bread. Now, Christ responds with scripture that man doesn't live by bread alone. In the second attempt, the devil tries to get Christ to basically commit suicide by jumping off the top of the temple, and he used scripture against Christ by saying that the angels would hold him up as it was written. Now, Christ responds that you don't tempt God. In other words, don't do really stupid stuff and expect God to swoop down and save you. And the last temptation by the enemy was to show Christ the riches of this world and say that he would give it all to him if Christ would just worship him. And, and Jesus told him, he said, that he didn't bow a knee to anyone other than God. And then he told the devil to get away from him. Now we can apply all these techniques in today's world. If someone tells you to do something that's illegal, unless it's an unjust law or it goes against God's law, don't do it. And get away from whomever told you to break the law. If someone tells you to do something that's going to hurt you, such as using drugs that are addictive, uh, be strong enough to tell them no. That includes doctors. You have rights as a patient, and just because someone is wearing a lab coat doesn't mean they know what's going on. We can go back to the Milgram experiment where someone in a white lab coat told these people to uh, continue to administer shocks. They, they weren't actually shocking someone, but they didn't know that. And because of somebody in a lab coat was standing behind them, a lot of the people would have actually electrocuted another person. So, yeah, just because somebody's in a position of power, you know, that does, does not mean they're better than you are. Now, if someone tells you to hate someone that you don't agree with or that they're less than human because they look or think differently, now, see the danger in that. Remember that millions have been killed through previous versions of cancel culture. If anyone tells you that you are anything other than a beloved child of the Most High God, recognize that as the voice of the enemy and tell it to get away from you. This includes self-talk, which may not be coming from yourself. In today's world, it's easy to become addicted to the latest drama and world event. Recognize what you can and can't control. You don't have to know about somebody's dog getting lost in Bangladesh that is not going to help you in your current circumstance. Be wise about what you put in your spirit. You wouldn't wake up and have a cup of arsenic, would you? Yeah, I, I would hope not. Likewise, you don't have to wake up and pour toxic propaganda into your spirit. Think for yourself, research for yourself, and be aware of the agenda that may be behind whoever's writing or saying an article. Remember that if someone is telling you everything that you want to hear, then they have an agenda and it's probably designed to benefit them rather than you. Someone that loves you will not help you hurt yourself, and they will tell you the truth even if it pisses you off. Now we're in a time like no other. And the spiritual and psychological warfare is real. Now, there's strength in numbers. So find a support system who will hold you accountable and help you see things when your vision gets a little blurred or if you feel confused. Those are some of the things that you can do to get rid of cognitive dissonance and fight back against this spiritual warfare and mind control. Now, if you've had any supernatural or paranormal events... UFO, alien encounters, Bigfoot sightings, experiences with alternate realities with or without substances, local legends, or anything else, send me an email at cupofcoffeewithscream at gmail.com. And if you need someone to help you refocus or reframe your experience or just to listen to you, same email. You all have a beautiful, blessed day.